Test. Test. By now, most of you are familiar with the Positive Coaching Program here at Fort Zumwalt. Within that program, you have the opportunity to impact and shape students' lives through athletics. But a lot of times what you don't get to see is that long-lasting impact you make in their lives. We wanted to reach out to some former athletes to ask them a few questions about the impact that their coaches and the Positive Coaching Program made in their lives. Is that good? So can we fly the drone now? My name is Hannah Hussman and I graduated in 2013. My name is Chase Mercer and I graduated in 2018. I'm Dan Morris, uh, North Zumwalt East class of 2016. Quentin Hooks graduated from Zumwalt North High School in 2000, uh, two, <laughs> 2014. I'm Quentin Hooks graduated Zumwalt North High School in 2014. My best memory from high school sports was my senior year. Um, you know, we, at the beginning of the season, we weren't expected to do well um, in basketball. We weren't expected to do well. Um, and we ended up winning districts that year. Um, and that was, it was really exciting because we kind of shattered everyone's expectations. Um, and we worked really hard to get there. So that was probably one of the most memorable moments I have from basketball. I have a lot of memories, but honestly, just being able to wrestle alongside my best friends because the, the friends that I made in wrestling were, I've never been so close to other people. We still have that bond even though we're not wrestling anymore. You know, and just being able to go and compete alongside with them and helping motivate them and everything and just making all the memories on and off the mat. Best memory from high school sports is definitely um, senior year state track uh, with my dad, just us two going down and doing two events that we didn't think I'd make it in the shot, shot, the shot put and the high jump um, and meddling in both of those and then meddling um, in the 110 hurdles too at the same time. And it was just such a cluster trying to get from one event to the next because they were all stacked on top of each other. So that would definitely be my favorite and probably my most intense high school moment. I think it was, uh, I guess it was my senior or junior year uh, of high school. We were playing St. Charles West the year before. We were co-conference champions with them. And so this year, we determined we're gonna, we're gonna show them that we're not co-conference champions, like we're the better team than them. And more or less, we get down to the wire. It's like the last few seconds of the game. Um, they fumble the ball. We scoop it up. We're about to win, take a knee. And I go running down the sidelines. And uh, this is still in huddle if anybody can find it. I tried to do a soccer slide because I've been watching ESPN the night before and my toe kind of got caught up. I just tripped, I ate it in front of the entire stands and I got up, I was still excited. It's just one of those things where it's like, it's, it's memorable because that was something we worked really hard for and we saw the dividends of it. But it's also just one of those things like, that's how sports are, like there's a serious moment, there's emotions, it's fun, it's goofy and you really don't forget it. Like it, it'll always be with you for some reason or another. Uh, so that's my most memorable moment. Uh, high school sports had a huge impact on my educational experience. Um, it's where I met a lot of my best friends throughout high school. It's where I spent most of my time outside of the classroom. Um, and it, it allowed me to build relationships that I wouldn't have otherwise had I not been playing sports. Um, so it really impacted me and it taught me a lot that I, you know, have used down the road and in the rest of my life as well. So it had a lot of impact on my high school experience. It definitely made it better because I had more motivation to excel in school because obviously if I didn't get good grades, I couldn't play the sport. And as I know, like a lot of people probably slack off in their work because they're focused on, you know, focus on the sport. And what I looked at it is this is something I have to do. I don't want to do it. It's something that I have to do to not only help me later in life, but help me in the sport and be able to play the sport. And I could, Sanker talked about 
applying the same principles and work ethic that I did to wrestling and applying it to my schoolwork. And that really helped a lot. Playing high school sports it definitely gives you a work ethic that you have to have because now you're in the gym, you're in the weight room, you're on the football field uh, every day in the summer. And so you can't be a lazy person. What that does is that transfers over to your academics. You have to stay on top of your academics. And you don't just want to be a decent student or somebody who's just getting by because you wouldn't want to be that kind of athlete. You want to be a great athlete. So it transfers over to being a great student as well. So I definitely think it teaches you discipline and work ethic in the classroom. I think high school sports impacted my education experience because um, Coach Bacon and his entire coaching staff, like they were always on us about doing the right thing in the classroom and not just like your behavior, but actually taking your education seriously. And that was pretty evident just by the way, like we had a points based system where if you were taking care of stuff in the classroom, you got rewarded for that. And ultimately like you had an opportunity to go to a zoo game and a bunch of other cool stuff. And so there's like this direct correlation between like, okay, sports is good, play well, win games, but also understand that your education is going to carry you farther um, once the game is over. And so you're also being motivated in the back of your mind, like, man, I kind of want to go to that Mizzou game this fall. Like, <laughs> you know, what, a, <laughs> what grade do I need to pull off for that? And so uh, that was one of the things that had a direct impact as well as just like, uh, it gave you, being a part of the team gave you people to hang out with um, during the school day. Like it gave you people to connect with. And like you had your classmates, but there was like a more, a deeper bond with those guys that you were playing with. And it made it a little bit easier to go to class when it's like, yeah, I don't want to be up at seven in the morning, but at least I'll get to see this guy or this guy. And we'll get to, you know, goof around a little bit and uh, things of that nature. So that's kind of how it impacted my education experience. It made school a lot more enjoyable and gave me something to, to work for. My coaches were everything. Um, I mean, it's a testament to who they are as people, but also who they are as coaches. Um, they taught us so much on the court and on the field, and you know, a lot of that was great, but it also taught us so much off, off the court and off the field as well. Um, I, I really have so much respect for my high school coaches and just who they were as my coaches, but also who they were as people and friends. Um, and they were just, they were wonderful, and that's a testament to them for sure. Really, it, it impacted everything. It impacted school and just life in general, because a big thing that they stress is discipline, because that's really important in the sport, you know, going on the practices and everything. And that discipline is easily applied to the rest of my life and in school. So like, I got work, I got it done, you know, as fast, as best as possible, and that's you know, just taking that, that discipline that they taught and just applying it to everything. They had almost everything to do with it. Um, while you learn on your own and you do things on your own, and even though they're the coach and they make the game plan, you're the one doing it all. But um, from life lessons to on the field lessons, I mean, just anything you can think of from dealing with tough times, being tough, dealing with adversity, um, they're involved in that in one way, shape, or form because they're there for you every day. Even though they're your coach, they're a person too. They're there to help you and watch you succeed and help you succeed. Their impact was not just so, but you know, there's this point system where you have the opportunity to like give yourself a chance to experience something other than just like, you know, high school football in North, to go to Mizzou game, whatever. But it was also their philosophy that kind of impacted, at least for me in the classroom, uh, because they always taught uh, the only two things you can control are your attitude and effort 100% of the time. So it, even to this day, like I remember that and everything that I'm doing, I can hear them in the back of my head, like attitude and effort, that's the only thing that you can control. And so while I was in high school, it's, I showed the class and, um, you know, being in a class I didn't want to be in or doing something I didn't want to do. And I really would hear their voice saying like, hey, what's your attitude right now? What's your effort? Like, oh, okay, well, I can complain about it. I can hate it. Or I can just think about, okay, well, this has a purpose. I can get through it and give the maximum effort possible. So. I think one of the biggest things I learned in high school sports that I still use all the time is the ability to be coachable. Um, I was never the best player on the court or the field, um, but learning how to take criticism well and then applying that and making it a lesson learned and doing better for next time is something that's important for athletes, but also just as a human being. Um, I do that in my work every day. I'm constantly learning and applying things. Um, that people are telling me and just trying to make myself better. So that is definitely something that I know came from high school sports that still helps benefit me to today. 
two examples of that could be from my dad, number one, just always dealing with adversity because no matter what, something's going to come up and hit you in the face when you're not ready for it and you just have to keep going. And then definitely from Coach Ogle, my junior year of basketball was a pretty big shock to my system. We kind of turned the program around um, and it was tough and he's a tough guy, but he's a great coach and what I learned from him was definitely that just because things aren't going your way, um, doesn't mean you can quit or give up or be selfish. You have to keep going. You're a part of a team um, and you're representing not only your team, but you're representing your school too. So you have to keep that in mind um, and always try and do the right thing and have a positive impact on your teammates and community. I think the other thing is accountability. Like that's something that I didn't realize transferred later in life, but I can still vividly remember a game where we had like 90 something yards and penalties and we got back on, you know, whatever day, the first day of practice, and we had to do like 90 something up downs to account for all the penalties that we had. And it was one of those things where it's like, ah oh, man, like, okay, we thought we were just going to be done with him. Like, oh, well, we made some mistakes. And it's like, no, you have to be held accountable for everything you do good and bad. Right. And uh, that's kind of what I'm learning as I get older is like you as like an adult you know whether that be a man or a woman like the biggest way people will recognize you is do you take responsibility for your actions right do you call yourself to the carpet before anybody else has to and that was kind of one of those things that I still remember that's like well if we had to just you know taking care of that during that game and said hey we're messing up we don't need to be having all these penalties that's on us, let's fix it, but we decided to just kind of let it roll and uh, we'll deal with it when we deal with it, right? And so that's what, that's what I see now, is just be accountable, take responsibility. And I still remember that from, I don't know, what was that, four years ago now, so. Failure for me now means something different than it did in high school. I think in high school, a lot of what failure has to do with is, you know, if you get a bad grade or if you have a fight with your friend or if, you know, you're not losing games that you should be winning, you know, that's all very important and that was important to me in high school too and that's how I defined my failures and my successes. Um, but that does change um, and I think high school sports teach you a lot about how to handle failure because you're not going to win every single game, you're not going to put up the most, most points every game or something and so um, I think it teaches you how to deal with failure better for later in life when the stakes may be a little bit higher. I failed a lot, <laughs> like Senker always says, like, like I, I only won three, four matches my freshman year, and I remember the time I was at a tournament my freshman year, and I was pinned uh, in the first period every match, and I was up in the stands, I was just, I uh, cried a little bit, not gonna lie, <laughs> and I was just devastated, I was like, thinking, well, this isn't for me, you know, I'm gonna just go back to playing baseball or whatever, and, uh, you know, and that was, I viewed that as a failure, like, I, I failed at this, and it, it's done, that's what it is, but, you know, but I pushed through that, I learned from that, that it gave me more motivation to get better, and then the next year, I went and I won that tournament, and now when I, I fail at something, you know, I can think back at that moment, and it's like, this is just me getting started, you know, because in reality, like, successful people are the same as everyone else, they've just been failing longer and they've learned how to learn from those failures and apply that to the rest of their careers and make them successful. Failure uh, for me has definitely changed. Failure in high school was, I'm not, I'm not putting out for the team in the sense like, yeah, I'm not catching passes or I'm not making tackles or the case is like it was very performance based, right? Like, you know, am I, doing everything I need to do to be like a successful football player, right? That was like my my view of failure back then. Now for me, failure is just any time that you don't learn from your lesson. Like, we're human beings, we're gonna make mistakes, and mistakes are honestly like the best way to learn is what, I, is what I'm learning. Like, the more you mess up, the quicker that learning curve is, and you start fixing things. You're only failing when you decide, ah, I'm not gonna learn from this lesson, I'm just gonna, you know, uh, just soaking it and brood and whatever the case is and so uh, it's definitely changed for me because um, now I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff where I can't have a bad day really I have to, I have to just kind of turn it around and still got you know nine ten more hours of work one one bad moment it <laughs> doesn't get me out of it <laughs> so uh, you just have to you just have to learn from it and move on and 
that's the only failure is when you just decide not to learn from it and just, you know, um, brood. Positive coaching can mean a lot of different things. I think on one side of it, positive coaching is about teaching, you know, these kids how to play better, how to win games, you know, how to do all the things they need to do to be a successful team or athlete. Um, but on the other side of that, I think positive coaching has a lot to do with how you're preparing us for the rest of our lives. Um, it's teaching us how to be held accountable and how to be respectful to our fellow athletes. And a lot of those lessons are things that we will continue to do for the rest of our lives. So I think that positive coaching has a lot of different sides to it, but ultimately, you know, you're not there to be our friend. You're there to be our coach. And that has a lot of different things to it, but you know, later, like some of my coaches I, I still talk to, I'm good friends with now. But in high school, you know, they were giving me tough love. They were teaching me the lessons that I needed to learn at the time. Um, and that was very important to me, and it still is. And I'm still using a lot of those lessons today. Positive coaching, well, it doesn't mean like they're just holding your hand the whole time. And they're just saying, oh, you can do this. You know, you're, you're perfect. You know, you can just, everything's going to be handed to you because it's just not how it is. Because if they do that, then you're not going to go anywhere. You know, obviously they have to be positive in aspects like they have to, they do have to help you get where you want to go, that's kind of their job. But you know, they're there to push you because I've been taken, taken way past my limits because I, I thought, you know, I put a ceiling on my success and you know, and they help kind of take that off and help me go to new levels I didn't think was possible. And you know, they're always, they're always there to support me through the challenges through everything in and out of the sport and really just making sure like caring about you and caring about your success you know not just themselves and their success but they care about your success and helping you do whatever you have to do to get there. Positive coaching is I mean that's just a good attitude good mindset and good coaching obviously but then there's the other portion of a coach you know the off the field part coach Weiber is a great example of that because he is the most energetic and positive coach on the court but you still get coaching done he still does his job you still learn a lot but then if I leave the court I know I can come back to him and it's going to be the same thing he's focused on you focused on helping you anything you need just all around a great coach and a great person. Positive coaching for me is um, really teaching people to push themselves past their limits and teaching them to be prepared for what comes next in life. Um, and doing so with, with like an attitude that shows that you really care about that individual and it's not just about, you know, the game for the coach. Because I can say each and every coach, Coach Cooper, Coach Bacon, Coach Robinson, um, Coach Scharf, like all the coaches that have been through North that I've been with, Coach Chance, I, um, like it was very clear to me at least that they, as much as they wanted to win games, ultimately they wanted to see us succeed. And they wanted to see us move on, whether it was in the workforce, into college, um, having a family, that they wanted to know like, hey, this game helped you do that. And they just, they cared so much more about us. And I think it wasn't really evident then, because at 17, 16 years old, all you really care about is like ball, right? Like that's all I want to do. You just want to play ball. But like now that I'm older, it's like really evident to me, like, man, they cared about us. And the stuff that they were talking about is real. Like. That's real, like Coach Bacon talked about like, what type of husband are you gonna be? What type of father are you gonna be? What type of family member are you gonna be? And um, now that I'm, you know, I'm getting older, I don't, you know, I don't have a family in that sense, but like a lot of times I think about my parents, like what type of son am I gonna be to my parents today, right? Like um, what type of friend am I gonna be to those people that I've known since, you know, high school? Um, those types of things and, um, you know, it doesn't mean that in positive coaching you can't be hard on you know, on your athletes. It doesn't mean that you can't run them up and down the field. I know they don't want to hear that, but sometimes that's a part of it. It's just as long as they receive on the other end, they're like, they're not doing this to punish me. They're doing this because they truly want me to be better. And it doesn't always have to come off on the field. Sometimes it's about how you talk to them afterwards as well and how you treat them afterward and how you treat them in the classroom and how you treat them in the hallway. Like, you know, when you're in sports, it's supposed to be sports, it's supposed to be difficult, but when you convey that message and every other, you know, if you can convey it on the field, great, but we're all trying to win while we're playing the game. But when you can convey that off the field, too, 
that's when it really soaks in with you like, yeah, it's, it's a lot bigger than the game and they really care about me. That's, that's positive coaching to me. Being a coach, you have a huge responsibility. The athletes that you coach look up to you. You're essentially preparing young people to go out into this world having faced adversity, struggles, difficulties. You're responsible for athletes' growth, development, success, and failures. One of the most important things to remember is you're doing more than just coaching young adults. Some you're preparing to go into the next level to play another sport. Some you're preparing to go into the medical field, into journalism, law enforcement, politics. You're teaching them how to be a husband, a wife, an aunt, an uncle, a brother, or a sister. If there's anything that you can take away from positive coaching, it's to remember that you're teaching possibly one of your athletes how to face one of the most difficult adversities they may ever face.